Well, let's talk about swales. Swales are essentially ditches. A swale is how we're going to corral water to go where we want it to go. And this is one of those things, this is sort of going to seem very simplistic and obvious, but you would not believe the number of times very smart people talk to me about the mistakes they made on this, and it's almost always this issue. So I'm just going to run through it super fast here. So if you imagine we have a little cutout of a slope of land, and if each of these lines is sort of representing, let's say, a one-foot contour, like a one-foot elevation level difference. And by the way, the contours don't have to be one foot apart. They could be two foot. They could be five foot. They could be 10 foot. They could be one millimeter. It depends on what scale the issue is. If you're looking at maps of the Rocky Mountains, they'll often have them in 25 or 50 foot contours because the scale changes so quickly. But generally on the exam, it's probably going to be a one-foot contour but you should always check to make sure. So let's say these are sort of one foot elevation differences. And so if we drew those across the land, which happens to be sort of dead straight angle, which is a little unusual, but we're just going to go with it. We'd have that nice rhythm of contour lines. And so if we looked at that down in the plan form, that's just going to be a bunch of straight lines. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the exact right number, but you get the idea. So that's pretty straightforward. If I was going to dig a ditch on here, and that ditch is going to start to make an impact on that. Well, each of those lines is no longer going to be a straight line, right? Each of those lines is now going to start doing, I have to do it a little differently here. I'll do it right over on this one. Each of those lines is going to start looking like like that. And one of the things that people make the mistake on all the time is they start pointing the wrong direction for the swale. If you point the wrong direction, you're not making a ditch, you're making a berm, you're making a mound. And so you have to just get really used to this as an idea. I know that sounds, like I said, a little simplistic, but like I said, this is one of those things that people tell me all the time they make a mistake on. And there's no reason that you should make that mistake. So you can see very quickly that the swale if you're talking about cutting into the land, the swale is pointing uphill. That's how I always say it. I always think of it as the swale is reaching up the hill to grab the water. That's sort of a ridiculous thing to say. Find the system that works for you so that you work fast and you don't have to think about it. You should just know how to make that work. So think about it. Just find the system that works for you for how you can remember that. But you absolutely want to be very clear because you will not pass the exam if you get that one backwards. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. You can maneuver water through a berm, a mound, but 95% of the time you're going to be doing it through a swale. So you're going to be making ditches that specifically function as a way to gather the water. So why does a swale work? Well, the swale works because the water is going to always find the lowest, closest slope, like the way to get down fastest. It's using gravity going to find the way to get down fastest. So any water that's anywhere near that is going to find its way to the swale. And it's going to start to be a gathering point. It's essentially how creeks work and all that. They eventually continue to be a gathering point and eventually become rivers, eventually become big rivers. That idea works at all different scales, both at kind of the river scale, but also at just kind of a simple site planning scale. So you can very easily imagine that if you were working on something and it had a bunch of lines like that and you were trying to protect something that was, say, there, I could start to change that in such a way that I would catch it, like maybe I'm going to do it above it so we can do it more easily. In this case, as the water is coming down, it's going to go straight into our structure. In this case, water that's coming down is going to get caught by that swale and go right around our structure. That's what you're doing on this vignette. That's the entire thing of it. It isn't any more complicated than that. There's a couple little tricks about how to do it. You have to be a little careful about how the buttons work. If you're out in the world, generally these swales look kind of roundy. You can see I always sketch it roundy because I'm old school and used to drawing them. And that's sort of how they are sort of generally perceived and that's how they should look. On the exam, the lines are connected little buttons and you move one of the buttons. And as you move a button, it changes it and becomes much more. So it might be something like something like that and you move that button and now this line goes from there to there instead. So it's more pointy and more triangly looking than what most people do out in the world. It doesn't really matter, it's not a meaningful difference, it just note that when you look at drawings, they may not have the same kind of quality look, 
as the way this particular vignette works. It's just a way to keep it simple and easy for the computer and you during the process. A couple of things about that, though. Be careful if, let's say, there's a property line or a tree line or something that's there and you're moving this button and you're moving that over. It's very easy to accidentally not realize that you've actually changed something that you don't have control of or you shouldn't be messing around underneath the trees. So be careful about the buttons. It's one of those little tricky things you got to work out. You can put in more buttons, but you can't get rid of buttons. So it's a little funny. This is one that you definitely want to spend some time practicing on. Blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or if you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you're just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. And that's going to be on April 22nd.